Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Now, if you are not being able to smile and you feel this feeling of angst, why did the share price actually go, go down so much today again after I bought yesterday or just a week ago? Or if you do a calculation, why? How much your portfolio have lost? Now, you are not alone. Now, ladies and gentlemen, in times like this, this is where we, GCP Global, we have been guiding you for investments in the last 31 years. That's where we come in. We would like to share our own experiences. I, for myself, for the last 31 years, have undergone a lot of crisis, from the 87 crash, 89 crash, the uh, global financial crisis, as well as the Asian financial crisis. Now, I hope today, from our tagline that is actually navigating the crisis market, essentially, we will be able to share with you psychological aspect of things you need to adopt to undergo this crisis. The mental makeup, other than the fact that you need to pace your buying, how much to buy at one time. Now, ladies and gentlemen, these are the broad characteristics. Please do not take today's session as a recommendation of the timing or the stock. Essentially, we only do the timing and the stock in detail in our classes. Um, so in this respect and in this background, let's start with the first question. Hi, Joyce. Hi, Yishan. Any first question, ladies and gentlemen? If not, let me just go through the few characteristics of a crisis. Now, if in most crises, it is very clear that a lot of things are uncertain. That is basically what a crisis is. In our FB Live last week, we mentioned that the fact that investors are unable to put a value to crystallize the value of the damage caused by the coronavirus and its impact on the various economies. At a time when you're seeing a surfeit of news that's impacting the markets, that's basically all the fact that you actually have new countries, you also have existing countries like Italy reporting newer infections, higher infections. Now, on the one hand, that is the fundamental aspect of the coronavirus problem. The financial aspect of the problem is how are investors able and looking to crystallize and value or quantify the damage that has been done. Now, does it mean that the first few packages, that the last one was actually um, was signed into the build by the uh, President Trump, you know, regards to the paid and unpaid leave, as well as the 750 billion euro package that came out. Now, at every time, like what happened during the global financial crisis, you have a case where the uh, Federal Reserve, the government officials, the ECB, are trying to do things on the one hand, but of course, subject to Congress approval like in the US, you need time for these packages to come through. Now investors, when they are worried about, about the known unknown, in this case, they know it's a coronavirus, but they do not know the unknown impact of how many uh, people will be hit on this, how long the, will the economy be crippled on this, and basically to quantify you know, the impact, and that's why you have this kind of topsy turviness. But of course, having said that, you know, you will, uh, you will actually have a case where essentially the, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the, you have to actually ask yourself to what extent were the things, were what the government dish out is sufficient. And that's what the market is actually trying to uh, crystallize. Now, the first question actually came from Mervyn. Now, the, and the question is, when do you think the market will reverse? And cases of confirmed cases drop? Now, I think this is where we uh, said in, our, in my media interview the previous week. That is, it will become a crisis when it becomes a pandemic and the number of cases in the US spread substantially. Now, what is happening now is that New York is the epicenter in the US. So that has to go down. And of course, the fact that the key areas for where there has been hit, that that number has to go down. If you look at China's cases, the stock market actually bottomed over there 
one week after the number of cases actually taper off. So this is left to be seen whether this is the case for Europe as well as for the US. Jin, mm, is it a good time to start buying into REITs? Now, as many of the SG REITs have tanked today, which are the REITs you think will have more upside? Well, for the second question, you have to attend our class, of course, uh, because we go through that and guide you in detail. Now, for the first question, is it a good time to start buying? Now, this is something that you have to answer yourself, because as I said, this session is not to actually tell you what stocks to buy or when to buy, but to give you a good perspective, especially on the psychological makeup and the mental strength that you need to do. Now, you have asked a very good question, but one thing you have to bear in mind is that in a crisis situation like this, when there are known unknowns, now this fall, especially for REITs this time around, is characterized by two gaps. You know, that was actually the previous week when it was doing at 840 on the FT S REIT index, and again this Wednesday at about the 740 level. As of today, as we speak, you know, it closed at 650. Now these two gaps have to be filled first, you know, before you see some stability coming in. And for those students who attended our class last Saturday, we went through the four corrections as well as the correct and the crisis. And we show you the patterns, you know, uh, essentially that was exhibited in the last few crises. Maybe to a certain extent, this crisis will play out this similarity. Next question. Dr. Goh, Dr. Goh from uh, Malaysia is asking, number one, do you think how further the FTS e-read index will drop in the next few days? Um, I think nobody can tell, essentially, uh, the next few days or even tomorrow. But let me just give you a perspective. Okay, since the S-read market started in 2002, the worst crisis that we actually had faced in terms of the severity of decline was during the global financial crisis in 2008, and 209, you know. So in that respect, the FTSE index fell from 1091 down to 321. That took a period of 13 months. Now, this was the worst ever. That is a 70% drop. In past corrections, as we have pointed out in our classes, in the last 10 years, S-REITs actually have four corrections. The average decline is 17%. Now, we go back to today's fall. With today's fall, all the 43 REITs have actually fallen by an average of 35%. Now, this 35% fall essentially is double the 17% average of the past four corrections. But this time around, what is so special about this fall is that it happened within a period of one month. Now, if you go back, today is 19th of March, all right? Um, so, it started on 19th of February when the S3 index was at 970. As of today, we have already lost 35%. Now, you have to ask yourself, therefore, whether in this instant, it's going to reach global financial crisis proportions. If it is, then be prepared for a 70%. If it's not, then um, it may not be um, that serious. But to put this in perspective with the Asian financial crisis, where stocks actually fell 58%, now that was in 97 and 98, where REITs basically have not come about. Now, that plus the global financial crisis have the worst negative fall ever, you know, other than today's 35% fall. So today's 35% fall qualifies for the third biggest fall that the Singapore market has ever seen. Right? But as I've pointed out, this fall happens within this short period of time. That's one month. You, know, you have never seen this before. And in your various SMS to me, Dr. Goh, you have mentioned the word unprecedented. It's true. It's unprecedented in this respect. Next question. Yeah, it is beer. You know, beer at this time basically grease your thinking cells, help you to make a better investor. Kelvin, Kelvin asks, many of the REITs are trading NAV. Is it a good time to accumulate? It's the same question that I've actually answered earlier. Let's move on to the next one. Mm -hmm. 
let's ask, uh, let's, let's move on and ask Patrick, okay? Hospitality REITs are attractive now and cheap. On a risk aspect, when various lockdown lasts for one year, what will happen if the REIT's income cannot cover the interest payment? This is going to be a big problem. Okay, I think you did ask the same question last week. But if you look at those hospitality REITs, which are not stapled, you know, now the stapled ones are the ones like, particularly your local hospitality REITs, because it comes with a master lease. The master lease, for example, like Far East Hospitality Trust, guarantees a 70% income. So be careful which hospitality REITs, especially those that are not staple. Okay, of course, the uh, clue given is among the newer REITs. Okay, those are the ones that we have told people to stay out. Mr. Yong, are REITs allowed to do buybacks? Yes, for example, Capital REIT has been doing buybacks. Secondly, are perpetual securities regarded as liabilities in counting its gearing? Unfortunately, no, because the uh, law currently is that 50% of perpetual, perpetual securities count as gearing that is actually loaned, and 50% count as equity. Now, in our GCP Global, when we teach students, we tell them to include all the perpetual securities as loan, because that will give you a better perspective. And that's why you see this round, the very heavily hit are the ones that are flirting at 40% gearing level, the likes of catch, logistics, and OUE, host, uh, OUE commercial trust. Can we apply TA to REITs? Uh, Kenneth, yeah. Uh, Kenneth, you actually asked when our, was our next class. Uh, right now, essentially, uh, we haven't determined yet uh, because we are trying and we expect the next class to be far bigger. So we want to ensure that we get the venue to cater to all because almost every day, every minute, we have a lot of questions coming in through WhatsApp and email. And if you are one of our students, you notice we try to, to answer as detail to the extent where you can gauge and have a better feel. But I ac would expect that it, when, when the DOSCOM code is actually lowered from orange, talking about orange, I need my beer, then we should be rolling out the class very fast. You know? So essentially, these are critical times. Critical times basically call for decisive decision. And that's why at GCP Global, we make sure that you know, we deliver and we guide you, especially during your downtime. And we teach you basically not just academic stuff, but things that will help you tie through a key crisis. So TA essentially is not so applicable as what we have mentioned in class, because uh, uh, in, in the last class, in last, in last Saturday, I did mention that some writers, you know, they say that when the stocks break through a 200-day moving average, you know, it becomes a crisis. Now, is that actually TA? You know, so that's left to be debated. Let's move to the next question. Uh, Dr. Go asks, which sector is a better bet, retail, industrial, or hospitality? Um, as I said, Dr. Go, we don't actually uh, recommend over the media, but since you only ask for sectors, um, you notice that in our class notes, we have mentioned that industrial REITs, the likes of Ascenders REIT, MIT, Capital DC REIT, and Maple Tree Logistics have transformed themselves into data center REITs or basically REITs with a higher proportion of data center. Now, these sectors were growing before this crisis. Uh, it does look that nothing will materially change that much with respect to the growing need for data in the uh, 5G connectivity, IoT, you know, uh, sectors. So essentially, the industrial REITs probably are the ones that will rank much better than hospitality. Now, ladies and gentlemen, actually today's session is talking about the psychological makeup that you should have. Now, a lot of questions are now being asked about what sectors, what stock. You know, I think I tried to lesson to that since I have actually given you for the indication. I'm actually more interested in addressing the psychological makeup of a crisis, you know, um, how you as investors should adopt the mindset. Maybe I should just refer you to uh,
Now, this article was written for the Pulse magazine. I was interviewed way back, you can see right at the bottom, in 2005. I think this, the Pulse magazine, for those of you all uh, who were only born after the 90s, is actually a magazine by SGX. So in my many interviews on Pulse magazine, as well as many publications by the media, you know, I've talked a lot about being successful as an investor. Now, being a successful investor is not just identifying which sector or what stock to buy, but when to buy and when to bet big. You know? So that is a probably more valid kind of uh, framework. Now, it is the same kind of mentality when we teach the proprietary traders of some of the funds, you know, the uh, property management funds, the, uh, the uh, fa family offices, that actually send their traders to train with us. So I hope you understand where I'm coming from. The next question is actually from Mr. Lo. Uh, the China virus situation seems to have bottomed up. Will the China reads bottom up as well? Um, actually, you have very little Chinese reads. Uh, uh, listed in China because the read law in China is not being passed yet. Uh, last year, the uh, first Indian read came out, that's Embassy read IPO. This year, I would expect that Philippines will come out with the read. The read with the Chinese reads with assets in China are actually listed in Hong Kong. The likes of, for example, Champion read, uh, uh, Siu you know, and the rest. So essentially, the, but if you look at the Chinese HKSEI index, the way it actually retraced back after the number of cases have hit uh, bottom you know, uh, in China, that I think is a very good representation of how the market may play out you know, after this particular coronavirus. Um, okay, Claire, Claire, you attended our class last week. Why the massive drop in Fraser Commercial and Fraser Logistics Trust? Um, you notice that basically they are undergoing this particular merger. You notice in our class, we have mentioned to you that United Hampshire, you know, probably chose the worst time in its IPO. Now, in the same case for Fraser Commercial and Fraser Logistics, their merger is coming up and the AGM and the voting has been done. It has to be done within the month of March and April. Um, they should probably have chosen a better time, you know. So, unfortunately, uh, this is the case on the timing side. But on the fundamental side, if you look at the merger, now, prior to that, I have already criticised some of the REITs merging just to get bigger, right? So, in this case, for example, like Fraser Commercial, they have assets in the Australia. They have exposure in Singapore, the likes of your China Square, um, and before that, they sold off 55 Market Street, which they actually made three times the amount. And I was actually looking forward to uh, get, getting extra gracial dividend from there. But unfortunately, with this proposal, you know, together with Fraser Logistics, now Fraser Logistics basically have assets in Australia, which unfortunately doesn't give you the growth potential as, as I've mentioned in other classes. Uh, but you notice that essentially they also have European assets. And in this case, uh, how does this merger actually benefit or bring synergistic benefits? For example, cost reduction, more efficiency. It was something already investors were questioning you know, before this crisis. Bear in mind that in a crisis, as what we have taught in class, you know, when the tide goes down, then you know basically who are naked. Okay, so these are just general comments uh, as to basically telling you, you know, that it is very important to always keep up to date on what the company is doing. The timing may be right and they are able, for example, to get through with the merger. But if you have a situation like this, where in a crisis, people only go for the top end reads, then you have a problem of losing out. Hi, Augustine. Your question is, how should we determine when the market has bottomed? What kind of indicators should we see to gauge that the market has bottomed? Now, my today's session is on the psychographics needed. You know, and it's more apt 
because number one, okay, uh, maybe I'll just give you a certain perspective. Now, other than my, uh, my earlier article, I just want to show you another article, um, or rather when they interviewed me, how I navigated through the global financial crisis. This was a big, big write-up on Sunday Times, which says, fortune favours the bold. Okay, you can see I'm just behind. I certainly hope I still look the same. This was like 10 years ago, okay? But essentially, there are a few things that I would like to share that makes this no different from other crises. And that is, the technical indicators who have busted all the indicators that you have learned, be it RSI, MACD, Bollinger's, Stochastic, okay, they are all indicating bias, okay? But this indicators do not capture the sentiment, okay? Now, same, do you look at fundamentals? Yes, to a certain extent, in determining what, which are the better reads to buy because all have practically come down that much, okay? Uh, so, what do I look for? I look for the fact that when I do my buy, you know, remember to be brave only when you have, number one, capital. Now, in the first place, you shouldn't be shaking because the first wave of sell, as you have seen, as well as the second wave of sell in this round is caused by fund redemptions, right? So, you have attended our classes before and we have told you that, you know, some of the REITs funds that came up at inception and some of the income-oriented funds that came up and then went on to invest in REITs, those were the danger points. Okay, once they actually are forced for redemption, then you have big problem. Similarly, some of the high net worth individuals, as well as many individuals, went into high gearing just to bet on REITs as well as the market. Now, if you have margin positions, we are still not in filter out. And if the positions drop 10% every other day, it's a matter of time before the margin call, right? As we have mentioned earlier, right now, people fear the known unknown. That is the impact of margin call on the market. How big, how bad, how long. Now, those are the kind of things. But I look, do look at volume as one thing. For example, Maple Tree Logistics Trust is being hammered from $2 down to $1.30. Anything change fundamentally? No. Okay, technically, anything change? Yes, all the technical indicators have been broken. That's why the earlier on, Kenneth kind of asked whether TA is appropriate. I always tell you, it is hardly appropriate. Okay, but what matters, therefore, is the fact that if you look at the volume of Maple Tree Logistics, now never in its history has it a been able to notch up volume of 87 million. 87 million, ladies and gentlemen. And if you look at the beat by spread, okay, that is the day high and the day low, it's at a historical high. Okay, that means it's actually the widest. Okay. In today's uh, trading, for example, you look at the Sanders Street. Okay, it was actually up and it came off. It came up again and it came off. That spread is almost a 20 cents. You know? So it's that kind of thing that tells you that the uncertainty is still very much there. Okay, you will see the volume thin down and this volatility in this trading. Now, the day high and day low for Moritz actually is a very good, it's similar to a certain extent like the VIX index. So these are the technical indicators I look for, not in textbooks, okay? But these are the kind of things I look for that, that help me to navigate through the past few crises and also to tell me when to bet big. Now, remember when it is at the bottom and in times like this, you know, the night is darkest before the, the, the sunrise, okay? So it's the same case. When everybody is at a loss, of what is actually happening now. Now, this is where you need to be firm, but you must be firm based on your good understanding of the reads that you have, the market situation. And that's basically what we try to impart in our various reads classes, which we have been teaching for the last 31 years. Uh, Ian asked the big uh, question again, why the massive drop in Capital DC and Maple Tree NA commercial? Yen, this is uh, capital DC drop is actually 29%. Maple Tree NAC drop is 36%. The average drop of all the 43 REITs in Singapore is 35%. Nothing P 
peculiar or no, no particular reasons to explain why capital DC dropped and Maple NEC dropped in this way, other than the fact that it is actually a crisis situation. Most of the REITs are being sold down. But bear in mind, as what we have mentioned in the class, those institutionally held REITs are the ones that have been bashed the most. Hi, Jilin. Hi, Vijay. Time for a beer again. Gerald? Oh, Gerald is asking the same question as uh, uh, Mr. Uh, po Potek Ling, okay, who sent me an SMS earlier. That is, how, what do you think about the merger of CCT and Capital Land Trust? Will it be affected by the COVID? Now, essentially, the ratios have been fixed. So unless the two companies went back and said that, hey, uh, now it's not been voted yet. See? So uh, if they want to change that terms, which I don't think they will change, Mm, but if it actually being changes, uh, you notice that the uh, fortunes of these two companies being tied uh, closely. That's why you notice that the price fall for both REITs are about the same. Joyce, Joyce asks, iREIT and Menno Life are trading at double-digit yield. Rather than looking at the blue chip REITs, are these value REITs worth looking? Uh, for iREIT and Manulife REIT uh, as well, you can add in Prime REIT, you can also add in Capital Oak Pacific. Now, these are REITs that are specifically exposed to assets in the US and particularly exposed to assets in Europe. So I think it's important uh, to, uh, to note that these REITs, while trading at close to 18%, yes, 18%, especially for Capital Oak Pacific. You know, um, if this two areas becomes geographically affected far more than Asia, do expect that this REIT's share price would probably suffer the most. Uh, Vijay asked the same question, you know, any reason why ESR dropped a lot? It's no different from the other REITs. Sean asks, is there a possibility that a REIT can be delisted or go kaput? Kaput means bankrupt, right? Um, the thing is that when share price drop that much, uh, the uh, loan covenants for some of the assets uh, that is being drafted or by the banks um, essentially would stipulate the loan covenant loan agreement. If none of these loan covenants actually being breached, then of course uh, nothing to be too worried about. But you have to understand that loan covenants for REITs are written based on debt to their asset value, not so much about the equity value. Of course, falling prices and crises like what we have seen so far are always fertile ground for bankers to uh, maybe change their mind, okay, or become nervy, or maybe to ask greater uh, assets uh, backing or bridging uh, cash, you know, so all this are what we call the known unknown. What time is it? Okay, it's coming to 8.30, so ladies and gentlemen, maybe I'll just take last two questions. Um, Take one ask a good question. That is, for someone who is already already fully invested, would you recommend selling now? Of course, the answer is no. Wait for a better entry later. Well, you can sell now only if you know when is a better entry later. Okay, it's going to drop another ten or twenty percent or thirty percent. But in many of our classes, we have shared that essentially. When it comes to REIT investment, a total portfolio approach is the most important thing. Okay, bear in mind that REITs essentially, while they actually invest in real estate, the way they behave can be bond-like in terms of the dividend, but in terms of the way the share price move. You know, in the last crisis, like the Asian financial, uh, the global financial crisis, they have shown to be, have exhibited equity price behavior. So for example, as I've mentioned earlier, uh, the FTSE 
REIT index actually fell 70.02% in the last global financial crisis. It actually was worse than the STI performance, which was actually down 62%. So bear that in mind. Last question is from... Uh, okay, we, we, sorry, Mr. Yong, you did ask, but maybe I'll uh, take the, give the last question to uh, uh, Wee Hoon. Okay, so since it's Wee Hoon's uh, uh, only question, should we keep a lot of cash to prepare for one large rights issue during the crisis? And two, imagine call if we leverage. Now, at this time, if we are still on margin on any stocks, uh, I think it will be difficult to sleep every night, right? Or at least to sleep soundly, okay? Beer or no beer, right? Okay, so I think that answers your question. Uh, do you need to keep a lot of cash? Uh, now, of course, at this time during a crisis, if you still have a lot of cash, it's probably the best ideal position. For me, as I've shared in my classes, uh, one of the... Uh, uh, reasons of investing in REITs is that every three months you get your dividend. So for my case, I've expanded the dividend that I've got on the 28th of February. I still have some coming in the 30th of March. The big ones are coming on the 28th of May. So even if the crisis actually stretch out, I will not be on leverage or margin. You see. So uh, in this case, you know, if you plan properly, respect to your cash call your cash flow such that you will not be subject to the mercy of a bank then it's a very good strategy and this is a kind of strategy you know in total that we teach in our classes yeah so uh, i think we have more or less hit the time today so do join us uh, unfortunately i cannot take all questions because as usual uh but thanks for 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 yeah, thanks for uh tuning in if the crisis continues, of course, be sure that uh, uh, we will be at hand to try to guide you through, especially for our GCP Global students. We have been doing this for the last 31 years. We also want to thank you that uh, for the last 11 years when we've been teaching REITs, the proceeds of our classes are donated to charities. Um, so we are therefore actually being an educator as much as we can while trying to give you as much information the platform that we use. Now, in this case, Facebook has clearly said we cannot make any recommendation. That's why we actually ask you to come for our classes where we can engage you in a context, in a tone, as well as in the timing. So thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, have some beer and stay safe. See you again, maybe next week.